let's look at the new point color tool in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. What's new? How does it work? What are the limitations? One of them involves profiles. Let's dive in. The HSL panel in the Lightroom Develop module has been replaced with a new panel called Color Mixer. If we open up Color Mixer, we see that we now have two options, Mixer and Point Color. Mixer is basically the old HSL panel with a new name. We have the ability to adjust hue, saturation, and luminance by dragging these sliders for each of these channels or selecting a point to pick a color on the image, which would then affect these channels. The HSL is only available globally. That's what makes point color really interesting. Not only is point color available in the global tools, but it's also available in masks. We'll get to that in a little bit. So let's look at what we can do in point color. If I grab the eyedropper tool, I can grab a color. I can point to any color in the image. And you'll notice that when I do this, that over on the right side of the screen, there's a rainbow of colors, a palette of colors that appears that shows the hue and saturation in the larger box of the color that I'm selecting and the luminance of the color that I'm selecting in the tall vertical box on the right. So now I can select a color. And when I do that, a swatch appears here in the point color. This is the color that I've selected to manipulate. The hue and saturation box has a dot in it to represent the color I've selected. And the luminance box on the right has another dot to represent the luminance. If I take the circle that's been selected and drag it side to side, you can see that also adjusts the hue shift slider just below and it allows me to manipulate the hue of this color. If I drag up and down, you'll notice that I'm impacting the saturation of the color, down for less saturation, up for more saturation. And the same adjustment is reflected in the slider below. If I go over to this luminance box and I drag up and down, you'll see that I'm adjusting the brightness of the specific color that I've selected, increased for more brightness, decrease for less brightness, the same results are reflected in the slider below. So you can use either the sliders or you can use these circle tools to adjust your colors, whichever you prefer. One of the nice tools here in point color is the ability to visualize which colors you are manipulating. If I check this visualize range checkbox at the bottom, you'll notice that the screen changes to only show the color that I've selected in color and the rest of the screen becomes monochrome. And this gives you the ability to make the adjustments that you like while only looking at the color that you have selected. I can increase or decrease the range of colors that are impacted with this range slider. Increasing will increase the number of colors that are impacted. If you look in the boat here, you'll be able to see that a little bit. If I decrease the range, fewer of those are impacted in the boat and the sky as I've reduced the number of colors that are impacted by point color by using this range slider. So that's a great way to make an adjustment to which colors you would like to see manipulated. You also have advanced tools to go after that range as well. If you click the little toggle here next to range, you'll see that there's a number of options down here, a number of sliders for hue, saturation, and luminance. These allow you to really refine the range of the color that you are selecting. These have a nice little interface that's easy to use. The dot represents the point of the color that you've selected. The box represents the range of colors that are fully impacted by this adjustment. So in this case, the hue, these are the hues that are being fully adjusted by any changes that I'm making. And these fall off sliders at the end impact how broadly beyond the specific colors that are impacted you want to have a range. So if I want these to broadly affect a lot of colors, I can extend out the fall off range at the top or the bottom of the hue, or I could bring them in close. I can take the box and I could make the box smaller to limit the number of colors that are impacted and drag in the fall off to really limit the impact, or I can make them larger. Now with this box, you're limited to the, the dot itself. You can't not affect the color that you've selected. And then these controls are really easy to use. And they're the same for hue, saturation, and luminance. So when you get to the point where you really wanna dial in the color you're manipulating, you can use these to affect 
the range of colors that you want to have an impact on. If I look closely at the swatch, I can now see that there's two colors in here. There's the before color and the after color. So I can see the impact that I'm having with this particular adjustment. One of the limitations that you have with point color is that you're limited to only eight swatches here. There's actually a way around that. And one of the ways around that is to use masks where you can kind of unlock that limitation by adding up to eight point colors for each individual mask. If I no longer want to use a specific point color, I can right click on it and select delete swatch, or I can actually delete all of the swatches at once. Let's look at how we would use point color in a mask. If I go into my mask settings, I would want to use a mask to not only limit the point color impact to a specific color, but to specific portions of my image. So in this case, let's say I just want to affect the water. I don't want to have any effect on the sky or the boat. I just want to impact the water itself. So I could say create a linear gradient and I would drag up from the bottom and now right around the skyline here. And so now you can see based on the red color that I'm only going to have an impact on what, what's happening below. I can scroll down and within my mask, I now see point color. I can come down into the water and select a color, and then I can make any of the manipulations that I would like to. So let's say I wanted to make the water much more purple, and now I have made that adjustment. That purple color did not affect the sky because I used the mask to limit it. I can see some of this color bleeding into the boat and the dock. Maybe I don't want that. I only want that color on the water. So now I could adjust my mask. So for example, if I did a subtraction, an object, I could then say, you know what? Lightroom, I want you to grab this boat and I want you to think of it as an object and I don't want to include it in this mask. I want to subtract it from the mask. Once that's completed, I can look at show overlay and now I can see the red color is no longer affecting the boat. And in fact, the mask that I have is no longer reflecting in the boat. I'm still getting a little bit on the dock. Let's say I wanted to go in and use a brush. I could then use my brush to eliminate that color from the dock. So I have all the controls that you would have in a mask to determine where I want this point color to have an effect, any of the mask options that are available. And as I mentioned earlier, because I'm working in a mask, I now have a brand new set of palettes, even though there's a limit of eight colors per point color setting, eight swatches, it's not really a limit because I could just create an additional mask or I could work globally to sort of bypass that limit. One of the limitations of the point color tool is that it is based upon the base profile that your image uses and not an enhanced profile. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at what, what I'm talking about here. If I go into the profiles, you could see Adobe color. Adobe color is a base profile. If I open up the profile browser. I've got my Adobe raw profiles. Adobe color is always a base profile. And usually the other Adobe profiles are base profiles as well. But starting in 2018, Adobe created the ability to add on top of those with something called enhanced profiles. And sometimes some of the camera matching profiles, they could be enhanced profiles that are on top of the base profile, or all of these special profiles down here, artistic, B&W, modern and vintage, those are all enhanced. Let me show you what I mean by the differences between a base profile and an enhanced profile. Let's pick an enhanced profile to modify this image. And let's do something a little more dramatic. I'll use this artistic seven, which gives me a bit of a green color in my image. So now that I've got that profile applied, if I go down to point color and select my picker tool, then I can pick a color on the image. You'll notice that even though the color that I'm selecting is a little greenish over in point color, it's still showing me a very blue color. And in fact, now that I've selected it, you can see the swatch is blue. It's not at all the color that I'm seeing with this enhanced profile applied. And that's because point color uses the underlying base profile to select its colors, not the effect of any enhanced profile. This is a little confusing in the interface, but functionally you'll get all of the capability that you need. If I go to make adjustments, you can see that any adjustments that I would make to the hue or saturation 
or the luminance, they're all working just fine. I can still make those adjustments and they work as expected. Just be aware that the interface may look a little confusing. The colors that you're seeing in your swatch and in these, this panel may not reflect what you're expecting to see. And that's because point color is looking at the base profile. It's not looking at any changes to the enhanced profile. The impact of using an enhanced profile is more pronounced when working in infrared since we can use enhanced profiles to swap colors with infrared and have a much more dramatic impact on what color is selected. I'm using the profile infrared temp negative 100 to get a good white balance. I'm white balance on the clouds. Now let's say I want to swap colors by using an enhanced profile. So if I come down to my infrared color swap profiles, and I select one of these, let's pick a profile that swaps the red and the blue channel. Now I have the colors that you would expect in an infrared image after a color swap. Let's go down to adjust some of these with point color. So I'll go into color mixer, grab the picker. And now when I look at the picker and I roll it over the trees, you're seeing, oh, I'm seeing this sort of yellow orange color. And if I look over in the point color on the right, I'm kind of seeing this reddish, orangish color, and it seems to be exactly what I'm pointing at, right? But if I click my mouse button, all of a sudden, the selection that I've made is no longer that color, it's now blue. And you see a blue swatch and blue controls. And this is because point color is pointing to the base profile, not the enhanced profile that did a color swap. So if you're working in infrared, the interface is going to be backwards. It's kind of like it was with the HSL panel where the changes you would make, the colors you would select weren't the same as what you were seeing with your image, but that's okay. Once you get used to it, you could still make the changes that you need. Same here. I have full control over the hue and saturation and luminance so I can pick the exact color that I want. I just have to do it by looking at my image and not looking at the panel on the side. It's not giving me accurate information. The same would apply if I picked a color in the sky, picking a color in the sky that looks teal is actually going to give me a different color. That's okay. I can drag this around still, either drag here, drag the sliders, drag the luminance, whichever I prefer, and I can still get the colors that I desire in my image. They're just not going to be reflected in the panel on the side. So just be aware of that if you're using either a enhanced profile for infrared, or if you're just using an enhanced profile on visible light photography and the colors are slightly different, the point color panel that you'll see will look a little bit different. It's not broken, that's just kind of how it works, but just be aware of that and reference the colors in your image to make sure you're getting the color adjustments that you want. So what do you think about the new point color tool in Lightroom? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist. A Practical Guide to Infrared Photography. It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. Now available in print and ebook editions. Check it out at infraredbook.com. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, and comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.